what we've got to do now is we've got to install the aileron servo and we have to apply and install the control rods for the, uh, the rudder and the elevator which will uh, be in position and then we can apply the covering to the port side of the fuselage. So what I've got here first to do my servo installation is I've got the minute servo, I've got the, the servo arm itself and the little screw to attach it and obviously my little precision screwdriver to, uh, to, to put all that together. But before I install it into the fuselage, I need to know that it's centered. And uh, the only way I can do that is by plugging it into my receiver, uh, powering that up, switching on my transmitter, and making sure that the, uh, the, the trim is centered. Let's plug in the servo. So I've plugged in my servo. Now I'm gonna plug in the battery to power everything up. So everything's powered and now all it leaves me to do is to bind it uh, to my transmitter. So I'll, I'll switch that on and it's in bind mode. Release and hey presto we're all ready to roll. So it's only the aileron servo that I'm concerned with which works on my um, mode two on that stick there. Um, so what I need to do is check that my trim is centered and it actually isn't. So what I want to do is just bring my trim into the center and then I know that that servo is actually centered um, for the build. Now all I have to do is put my servo arm centrally as I can onto the uh, onto the servo itself. Place my tiny little screw. Actually, it's probably best if I do this with with a pair of tweezers. There we go. Now on the servo. Brilliant. Okay, let's get rid of that. battery away, don't need that for an, until the uh, latter stages of the build and all that's left for me to do now is to position the servo into the fuselage. As you can see that the, the shape of the cavity um, is, uh, is servo shaped and there are also some slits cut um, to receive the, uh, the Intrusions on the uh, on the servo itself, so the arm goes through there, and literally we just push it in until it sits flush within the uh, within the fuselage, and obviously the self adhesive material on the other side will also adhere to it as well. Now we've got our, our wire here, and we just need to secure that wire so that it runs down and we need it to come out around about this area here um, where it will attach to the, uh, um, to the receiver. There we go. Okay, now comes another very important piece of the, uh, of the assembly and that's actually attaching the control rods um, to the fuselage through this piece of uh, this piece of flexible tubing. Now it's important because uh, the position of it uh, needs to be right so that the, uh, the the servos don't bind and these these uh, rods run run nice and free. And the first thing to do um, is to Check your rods for alignment. Now, first of all, your rod should actually be nice and straight. Um, and when I say straight, the lines of it should um, appear straight. So if you take it from the, uh, the place where the rod actually 
joins on to the linear servo, there's a, 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 a straight um, part of that that should line up with the straight part of the rod going right down the fuselage. Now on mine it's slightly bent, it's, if I don't know if you can see that, but this rod comes down there and then this kicks off like that slightly. So if I turn that through 90 degrees I can also see that this is nice and straight but this kicks up slightly in the air. So before I install it, I just want to make sure that um, when my servo is pushing, it's pushing and pulling efficiently. And uh, so what I can do is just make some very small adjustments to this wire. It's, it's bendable. Um, you can do it with your hands. That's not a problem. And I've lined that up nicely now. And it just leaves me to bring this down slightly. Don't, uh, don't fear snapping it. And... I can also see that um, the wire kicks in slightly on the downward portion here. So I just need to sort of fiddle around with it quite firmly just to make sure that everything uh, is as it should be. Nicely lined up so it's not going to give us any problems. There we go. And, and also check on the other one too. In fact, I think uh, this just needs a little bit of a lift at that end. Yeah, that seems absolutely fine. Now, before we slide the rods through this particular piece of tube, um, we just need to put a little bit of lubrication on them. Um, it helps them uh, to pass um, through this tube um, and and slip around when they when they're being used as control rods uh, without uh, without having too much friction on them so it doesn't put any strain on the uh, on the servos. I actually use a uh, a bicycle chain oil. It's it's actually quite thick. And then. All I need to do is pop this through the sleeve and the oil will start coating things as required. And for the second one, make sure I get it around the right way, don't want any confusion. And in it goes, there we go. This comes in handy again. I can just pop our uh, fuselage on there, and as you'll see in the manual, this tube actually sits along the uh, the length of the fuselage. You might be able to see here. There's a little patch marked out on the uh, on the sticker um, for where the uh, where they should exit, where the control rod should exit as well, and in fact, you can you can partially cover the uh, that hatch that uh, hatched area with the tube itself. Now, at this end, what you're looking to do is to part these control rods um, around either side of the little clip that sticks up out of the uh, the RX mounting system, and to the top you want the control rod that has a curve on it, um, that's actually the rudder control, and at the, uh, the lower one you want to have the one that's uh, got the angles on it. Um, so you can pull them forward like so just to make sure that they're, uh, they're where they should be. And so when you position this tube um, it should really sit so that those have free passage either side and it's not pulling one or the other up or down um, and causing it uh, causing it to uh, to rub against things. So once it's in that position there what I can do is um, grab some of the, uh, the sticky parts and just make sure that it uh, is sitting where it, uh, it needs to sit.
Okay, I'm sitting a, a little bit low here, so I'm just going to make an adjustment. Okay, let's get the big sticker out. And um, as we did with the last one, the, um, the size of it means that we can probably hand hold it rather than have to uh, use a pair of tweezers. Now you'll notice on this sticker we have a little fold under tab here and that obviously helps with uh, up this end with stopping the, uh, the rods actually binding on these stickers themselves. So I'm just going to do that, fold it over, there we go. So we have a little patch of non-stick on, uh, on the back of that. Let's get that out of the way, bring this in nice and close and do our stuff. There we go. So you can see that the uh, sticker sits over the, um, the tube nicely and uh, there's still volume underneath there to allow the the control rods to uh, to actually move back and forth. 